All right, it's time for the monthly q and A. I'm a couple of days late, but that's what happens when you have to watch 60-ish episodes worth of content to catch up to a few different shows and make a few different videos. But we're here, it just means you're going to get another one in the same month at the end as per usual. But let's kick it off with a question that one particular commenter thought I wouldn't answer, but little did he know. I was actually going to comment and answer it first. Here's my question that will definitely not be used in your next Q&A. If you could be paid 10 billion right now, but for the rest of your life, every song you heard turned into the Friends theme song in your head, would you take the deal? This means all elevator music, all music and commercials, any concert you went to, any music in any TV show or movie would be heard as the Friends theme song. Now here's the thing, 10 billion dollars. That's a lot of money, you would never have to worry about anything again. But here's the thing that I think a lot of people who would take that money don't understand. Your life would essentially be ruined. All the amazing shows you watch, you couldn't go to a concert, you couldn't embrace the wonders of the world, and music comes in so many different shapes and sizes, not just not being able to listen to your favorite band. It essentially ruins everything, and even though I do think the Friends theme song is one of the catchier openings that has ever been made, your life would absolutely suck, especially given the fact that, like, your partner next to you or your best friend would be enjoying something and you'd sit there deadpan looking like an asshole because all you're hearing is the goddamn Friends theme song. So no, I wouldn't take the money. I mean, the money's tempting, but when you actually think about how the rest of your life would essentially suck it just isn't worth the deal for me it absolutely isn't and no amount of money is probably going to change that what are some anime coming soon that you can't wait to watch i mean that's pretty much like everything coming up i mean there's just so many good ones coming out i think the obvious big one would be chainsaw man because that i think has some of the biggest hype in some time but i mean outside of that there's just so much every season that just is so unexpected that you know you can expect it but then there's always those underdogs whether you get into those like holy shit no one ever saw that coming but i mean i'm also really eager to see the new season of golden conway which is coming out i think it's next season which even though it's a little underappreciated in the West, that's one of my favorite ongoing shows, and I'm glad that it's been carrying on because of the popularity in Japan. How do you deal with stress in your life, and how do you unwind and tune everything out? Do you use an app, or listen to music, or go outside and do some kind of sport? Perhaps you have any tips on how to deal with it, and knows good ways to relax. There's actually a really good one, and I think a lot of people who are like consumed by anime could probably use some advice, because I think depression and anxiety, it goes a lot with like internet culture, the people who do stick inside rather than going outside, and I think there's a couple of ways to really deal with it. One, you have to find a hobby that disconnects you from your screen, whether that's going for a walk, whether it's doing some form of exercise, whether it's, you know, just doing something that tears you away from that screen, because I'm someone who's an introvert. I prefer doing things inside, but even myself, I always make an attempt to do something in the outdoors at the very least once a week or at the very least every so often. Like recently I went to the zoo, which I love going to places like those, or even going to a movie theater, right? It may sound a little weird because I'm saying tear yourself from a screen, but the idea of going to watch a film in a theater versus watching a film at home, it's a different experience. You know, you actually do have to put yourself out there, be surrounded by different people. And I think even though there's a type of stress and anxiety people go through with being around people, the best way to overcome that is to be around people. I think having jobs that put you front and center in front of people helped me a lot overcome that. But really the big thing is if you're just surrounded by your phone or your computer all day, you know, you're ultimately just going to be in a weird bubble even if you're quote-unquote happy. You should go for a walk. You should, hell, if you have a balcony or a porch, just spend some time out there. Read a book. Go on your phone outside. It just goes a long way to ease your mental burdens. And having a good loved one, whether that's a girlfriend, a boyfriend, uh, you know, you're married or your best friend, just stuff like that and talking and communicating will go a hell of a long way. So just remember, try to have some outdoor time. Really just put yourself in different situations that normally are outside your comfort zone to help open up your horizons and in return you'll probably discover a lot new favorite hobbies and pastimes that you never thought you would like and exercise does go a long way and not only will it keep you healthy it's something that will ease your stress a hell of a lot too 
If you're ever pissed off, get an exercise bike or something and just pedal away. You'll feel a lot better. Would it be disappointing to you if you had cold summers and hot winters? I remembered a few years ago it snowed really hard in April for like a week, which is not necessarily summer, but my point still stands and it made me gloomy just because I want to relax outside in a somewhat warm day. I mean, truthfully, yes, because like you definitely have expectations. I think no matter where you live, if you live in a place that has four seasons, you know, people always will complain, God damn, the winter's taking too long. I can't wait for summer but then when summer's there people complain about the heat and they wish it to be winter so it's cooler so people are going to complain no matter what but there is a sense of like cycle right you hope things you you know you wish for june because you can go outdoors you can go do things but you know in the middle of december i, I don't want to go drive it's snowy oh it's icy i don't want to go do that so i think yes if we came off of like say a winter that was very easy there was barely any snow and then in you know it was a fairly warm winter all things considered i probably wouldn't be mad if it was a week in the middle of summer that had snow but if it was a shitty winter and then somehow my summer got ruined yeah i'd be pretty pissed off all things considered how did you come up with the name of your channel so this is one that th like with a lot of i think youtube channels like they just had it made before they actually made videos because you know you wanted to comment you wanted to do this or that ultimately it was because back in high school when i got my xbox 360 so i got it in ninth grade like pretty much right when ninth grade kicked off i loved xbox and i loved achievements right because what they have is like you can look at steam or anything so like there's a bunch of achievements so objectives and you get like a little numerical score for unlocking them right and because i could only afford maybe a game a month with my part-time job also saving for college and doing a bunch of other things being responsible so ultimately instead of you know what i do now because i have stuff like game pass and i can just afford more games i basically used achievements in order to be able to make games replayable so there's a bit of an objective a sense of reward so basically just stood for Achievement Hunter because that's what people who hunted achievements were called back in earlier internet days. I don't think anyone really calls himself that anymore, but you know, it was the idea of like you're going after achievements. That's actually you know, like where one of Rooster T's sub companies, uh, Achievement Hunter, got their name from, right? Because you're hunting achievements. So that's basically where it came from. It was just, I loved the unlocking achievements. I still like unlocking achievements, but the difference between high school Brandon and adult Brandon is that adult Brandon has still, I think, a lot more free time than a lot of people I grew up with who now are stuck with kids. And I say, God, that must suck. But ultimately, like, there's so much I want to play, so much I want to watch, so much I want to do. I don't waste my time getting every achievement in a game, but it's still fun, and sometimes the odd one will go in my way. So that's kind of how it happened. So, you know, ultimately, it just kind of stuck with me, and I think it works out because just having my name be, like, Brandon Reviews doesn't really stick out that much, but people will know who H. Brandon is, right? It's just a very easy way to stick out from the crowd. As it stands, it doesn't mean anything, but that's where it started out, and I just like the look of it at this point. And now for my favorite segment I don't do it too much but it's what I like to call idiot says you know when I get such a stupid ass comment that I have to go out of my way to not just clown it on Twitter but clown it in a video this is what I call the absolute worst take I have ever seen on spy family now this comment popped up on the episode where Anya saved a little boy from drowning keep that in mind as I I clown this comment. Anya sucks this episode. It reminds me of all other female characters lately. Completely irredeemable, selfish people that get rewarded and get cocky. Worst six-year-old ever. I hate episode 11's writing. Now, incels are an interesting breed. They just, they live in their own little bubble of hate. And the idea that you could not only come out of an episode where said six-year-old saved a life, but the fact that... Anya is one of the most pure and bundle of positive energy I think I've ever seen in the anime medium. And the fact that you even recognize that she is sick, so she'll have bratty moments, but she's never annoying. And even if, like, somehow you disliked her character, of all the episodes to post this comment, Episode 11, when she saved a goddamn life, a boy would have died, and just because a girl saved said boy's life, the incel took over and you had to post that nonsense. My man needs to touch grass, and then maybe it's too late, but that is absolutely the worst take I've ever seen, 
and you are a goddamn moron. Have you ever thought of doing a review more specialized about the opening or ending of a show? Because we have some pretty great openings like, for example, Spy Family. Now, I did answer this in the actual comments, but I wanted to post it in the video as well. I personally don't think there's a whole lot to say about an opening and ending that you can't say in an episode review or a discussion, whatever. Because even though there are, I think, a handful of openings that are supposed to be stylistically like, holy shit, you're supposed to you know, really take your time to appreciate it. For the most part, an opening serves just to get you excited. A good song, show you some stuff that's gonna happen, and personally, I just don't think the people who actually talk about openings that deep are really analyzing things that are supposed to be analyzing, but more so, they're just kind of making up their own beliefs of what it means. Now, I could be wrong, and that's just my opinion anyway, but I personally think it's a waste of time, and I don't think there's a whole lot to actually say about it other than it's good or bad. But hey, that's just me. Just saw your tweet about the Shield Hero manga readers complaining that it's a bad adaptation when in fact the anime is adapting the light novel. The same thing happens in the Mushoku Tensei community from time to time and leaves me flabbergasted every time. Do they not know it's originally a web novel that was turned into a light novel? I mean, I don't know, but one would need to only go to Wikipedia or TV Tropes page to find that out within 30 seconds. I'd be mortified with embarrassment. How do these people have no shame? Are they proud of their ignorance? God damn, that was even as like salty as I was to that spy family commenter. But I mean, yeah, it's a weird thing with me because the thing that annoys me as a content creator, because I don't read source materials outside of like two things, and ultimately I just don't enjoy it, right? But there will be so many people who will be manga readers, and they will specifically say, you should read the manga, it's so much better than the anime. But it's like, it's not even adapting the manga, it's adapting the light novel. Like, most of the time, the light novel is the goddamn source, and most of the time it started as a web novel. And it's really weird because, I mean, you can go back to So I'm a Spider, So What? Because the human storyline in that, which manga readers, man, they, they're like, why did the anime make up this bullshit human storyline? It's so boring. But then the light novel readers would be like, it's a proper adaptation for the most part. Yeah, there's some changes, but which is to be expected. It's a weird thing, man. Like, my anime list, Google, and every time like I tell someone to Google something they get it like a little salty that like I told them something instead of just answering it but like it's so easy to find information but there is this level of ignorance that is oddly just confusing like how do they not realize that most of the time the light novel's the source like if there's both a light novel and a manga I mean 99% of the time the light novel's the source and I don't know how the hell people don't realize that has there ever been a time when you stop playing anime and or video games in your real life like gaps or lack of interest in hobbies and interests not really in the way of like stopping but there's been periods where one's dominated more than the other like when i was in high school all i really did was play video games right and then when i got into college that was kind of like the area when i got into anime so because i had like 18 hour days for a couple of years it was basically like anime was my break for 20 minutes at a time so i didn't play a whole lot of video games because it was more of a time sink in one sitting because do you really want to play Mass Effect for 20 minutes at a time, or do you want to watch an episode of anime 20 minutes at a time? Now it's basically like video games are my primary pastime, and anime is whatever I cover for the most part is what I make videos on, kind of like the job, right? So there's been periods where one's dominated more than the other, but I've never full-on stopped either one basically since I was in high school, right? You know? It's just one of those things that depending on priorities and in the case of right now like you know i watch so much anime for my job that it's like i want to play video game in my free time because i don't really want to do the same thing i already did for eight hours previously or something like that right so that's kind of where it is like different it takes over in different ways but it never full-on stops for me and i think that's pretty normal for a lot of people and this one just to end i've clowned this type of remark before and because the person's been around long enough i'm gonna be nice and censor their name and maybe take liberties to edit their profile picture but this happened i think it was on the skeleton Knight video i think it was the last episode of skeleton Knight, and they decided to come in and say i was watching the episode when your notification hit and spoiled it the interesting thing about the skeleton Knight one is that because like nothing actually was spoiled there i think it was something along the lines of like arc accidentally made a religion because you know if you watch skeleton Knight, he accidentally does a lot of shit but no character specifically says like he made a new religion or in the episode there's nothing that says 100 percent he did but because he summoned ifrit you know people are acknowledging like a giant fire beast is probably going to cause a lot of eyes to be raised and might end up making a new religion the most spoiler things 
would be like, you know, who ends up dying and things like that. And it's weird that in the middle of watching, you would take time to look at your phone and then get mad that, you know, I quote unquote spoiled it. Like, I don't ask for notifications to be turned on. That's on you, right? I don't ask for that. But the thing that gets me is I purposely sacrifice views by not clickbaiting in the way of actually spoiling. If you want no information, it's on you to not look at the internet before you watch the episode. I'm not going to make a generic Skeleton Knight Episode 9 review title with a generic poster image thumbnail. It has to be exciting, it has to be engaging, otherwise it doesn't get views. But I purposely go out of my way to avoid actually spoiling in the way of, oh my god, X character died with his placer dead face in the thumbnail. I would go a little more like, oh, you know, if you watched it or you might be able to interpret it, but I'm not going to be an asshole about it. And I got a question to myself. Why do I go out of my way to save people spoilers when people will come out of the woodworks once a month, once every couple of weeks to claim I spoil them when you can look at what actual spoilers are from most reaction channels out there? You gotta take off the clown wig, man. You really do. And people who say that are just so ridiculous. I, I just have to get that off my chest. It's so annoying because 99% of the people who follow this channel can recognize I don't spoil. But with that said, Q&A over. Got a little feisty, but sometimes you gotta. You gotta take care of business, especially with that spy family comment. But if you have any questions, let me know down below. I'll answer it probably in the end of this month's Q&A or maybe in a future one. So let me know your questions down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you're new around here. So next time everyone, please take care and have a good one.